everyone, how's it going? So, in our last two videos, we looked at Bulbasaur and Charmander and saw their attempts at beating the game at the lowest level we could. But a lot of you seem to think Squirtle will be the best starter because it is often the starter a lot of people pick. I did when I was a kid, and it's the starter speedrunners use, so you'd think it would be the best. But the truth is, while a lot of you like to compare my runs to speedrunning, in all my recent videos, including minimum battles, I haven't been using items in battle and speedruns do. So that changes strategy dramatically because there are many things you can do with items in Generation 1 that you simply cannot do without them. So certain Pokemon go from being kind of awesome to kind of terrible and vice versa. So, what happens to Squirtle? Well, let's see. Brock is pretty easy, but before you fight Brock, you will need at least one optional battle, does not matter, even a wild Pokemon will get you enough experience points to get to level 8 after you fight the mandatory bug catcher right near the exit of Viridian Forest. And level 8 is where we learn Bubble, which, aside from its usefulness against Brock, really kind of sucks because it's only base 20 power and Squirtle doesn't have fantastic special. Case in point, even trying to get past the junior trainer is a little tricky. I actually fought him twice, and this isn't too big a deal because after we defeat Brock, and yes, with Brock you just use Bubble a couple times, the game gets kinda hard. In both previous runs, we had access to our weak elemental move, which is 40 base power, right around Route 3, while Squirtle will learn Water Gun, but unless you level up a lot in Viridian Forest, which would waste time, you'll be stuck with Bubble and you're just not dealing as much damage. In addition, Squirtle is the slowest of the starters and doesn't have fantastic special. So for the first time, I found myself actually struggling a bit to beat trainers on Route 3. Mount Moon's a little easier because there are hikers and anytime you find a Geodude, just knock it out. We're gonna need some experience points for a little bit later and hikers are the best source. By this point, you should have Water Gun, and once you get that, the game gets a little bit easier for all of two seconds. We're also gonna pick up Mega Punch once again, but once we get through Mount Moon, we then have to decide whether we wanna fight the rival or Misty, and neither are actually that easy. You see, Misty, we have to use Mega Punch, which can miss, she likes to use X Defense, and our attack isn't great. And the rival, we have the problem with the accuracy drops from Pidgeotto. And even though Bulbasaur won't always use Vine Whip, it could use Leech Seed, which when you have decreased accuracy, is pretty much as bad. So because of that, we're actually gonna fight Misty first, since once we defeat her, we'll get TM11 Bubble Beam, and that will make the rival fight a heck of a lot easier. But beating Misty isn't exactly a walk in the park. Staryu isn't the biggest problem per se, but at my current level, it's not guaranteed to faint in two Mega Punches. So I use a Tail Whip, she counters with an X Defense, so I use a second Tail Whip. Yes, it seems like I didn't need it, but trust me, it was a damage range that was not in my favor. With Starmie, a similar strategy applies, except you want two Tail Whips ideally. Unfortunately, she used an X Defend, which isn't great, but she does miss with one of her tackles, and I get a critical hit. You don't actually need luck like that to beat her. I'd beaten her another time, where I even misclick. This is just the battle I continued the run with. Sometimes, when you forget to save, you'll have to do a tricky battle again, and Misty is tricky. A good example of why leveling up more than you'd think makes a difference later in the game. Had I been smarter, with leveling up on Route 3 in Mount Moon, I could have been at level 21 and possibly I wouldn't even need the Tail Whip to two-shot the Staryu. That would save a tackle from the Staryu and give me more HP to deal with the Star Me. And this is a really good example of why it's important to show first runs against first runs because during second runs, you start thinking about stuff like this. And one other thing I really want to stress is that I don't use a cheating device to get perfect stats on my Squirtle or any of my Pokemon. So the stats are still random. Yes, I reset until I get stats I'm happy with, but if you know how DVs or determinate values work, you can't always tell at lower levels exactly what they are. You kind of get a range. So I know that the stats are okay, but I don't know exactly how good. So a strategy may work perfectly in one run at level 21, but in run two, I might need to be up to level 23. 
And to me, that's just part of the game, which is why I'll never use a cheating device to manipulate my stats. Only in future to make sure the starter is the Pokemon we want. Anyway, let's move on to Rival 3, who is still a little difficult, but not nearly as hard as in other runs. Like always, Pidgeotto is not great, but if you don't get a sand attack like what happened in this battle, it's pretty consistent. Unfortunately, once again, stats aren't quite good enough. Took three hits instead of two. That extra hit's pretty important, but I should also mention you start to notice that Squirtle is quite a bit slower than the other Pokemon, and so I'm being outsped. This will be a constant theme. Abra is still easy. Rattata takes a single Bubble Beam as opposed to two Mega Punches. Bulbasaur, you do need to use Mega Punch twice. It's annoying because you can miss. I got tackles from the Bulbasaur, which is pretty good, but we do outspeed because Bulbasaur is also very slow. Definitely not what I consider to be an easy fight, but easier than it was in the Bulbasaur run. Rival 3, however, can be a little bit more difficult because of Squirtle's lower speed. Since both the Raticate and the Kadabra can outspeed you, and if they both attack you, that can be the end of the fight. Ideally, what you do is a bubble beam against the Pidgeotto and against the Raticate. I should have leveled up a little bit more. I really do try to avoid leveling up past all my problems, but this fight would be way more consistent one or two levels higher. I do get a critical hit against the Pidgeotto as well, as you may have noticed. That's kind of lucky. The Kadabra uses Teleport as opposed to Confusion, and I also get Dig on Squirtle. And even with Leech Seed, you only need two digs to faint the Ivysaur. And that's the SSN. There are plenty of trainers I could have fought and probably should have. And this is where I'm starting to realize Squirtle perhaps is going to be a little bit harder than I was thinking. I was really not planning to take many optional trainers. In fact, I wanted to stick as close to minimum battles as possible. But the further I got in the run, the more evident it became that I just wasn't able to do fights consistently without leveling up a little bit more. But for the next little while, we don't have to deal with any fights like that. We're going to skip Lieutenant Surge for obvious reasons. We'll come back to him later. And we're just going to head back to Cerulean City, through Rock Tunnel. Lots of easy optional trainers here because of Bubble Beam, but not as easy as with Bulbasaur since the Slowpoke resist our water moves and have good defense and this is in direct contrast to Bulbasaur which had Razor Leaf so you know not as great but still pretty good we can make our way to Celadon City and once there the easiest thing to do is to go to the Rocket Hideout since also the Grass Gym isn't going to be the greatest place to go now is it? As you could imagine Giovanni is pretty easy getting critical hits just allowed me to do it without taking damage but if you saw I did add a new move to my arsenal, Ice Beam. You get that from the top of the Celadon Pokemart by trading a Freshwater to one of the NPCs there. This will help us out with rival fight number four, since we've got a bunch of Pokemon weak to ice moves. So a single Ice Beam will faint the Pidgeotto, but Gyarados can be a little scary if it decides to use two Dragon Rages. Dragon Rage deals exactly 40 damage, and two of them would be enough to knock me out once I get hit by a quick attack. Thankfully, I got a critical hit, and that's a little lucky, but the AI isn't good AI, so it wouldn't necessarily use Dragon Rage every single time. It might use Leer or something. Everything else is a one-hit KO, and looking in retrospect again for a future run, probably best to actually go to Lieutenant Surge or Erica. Definitely fast enough that it shouldn't be too much of a problem, or even if I get hit by a Thunderbolt, I should survive against Lieutenant Surge. That would give me enough experience points to make Gyarados a 2-hit KO versus what should have been a 3-hit KO. So, live and learn there, but the rest of Pokemon Tower is pretty easy, and at this point, probably best to go and fight the gyms that we've skipped. I decided to use Dig against Pikachu and Voltorb. Probably wasn't necessary, but better safe than sorry. Raichu did outspeed me. However, you can see how little damage it did with Thundershock. Thunderbolt, even if it did double as much damage, in fact, it would need to be probably a critical hit with Thunderbolt for it to knock me out in one hit. So I probably didn't need to wait this long to face him, but the abysmal speed of Squirtle is really coming into play here. Wouldn't be as big a problem against Erica, but I actually legitimately forgot about her so I just headed to Fuchsia City like I'd normally do. Here though, there's something very important you should do first. I usually don't even mention this, 
but go get Surf. Usually I get Surf after because it doesn't matter, but since we're using a water Pokemon, we want Surf as soon as possible. Wouldn't have helped us with Erika, but for the remaining gym leaders in the game, having arguably the best water move, I mean, I know it's not as powerful as Hydro Pump, but it does have 100% accuracy, so more consistent, which is what we like, and it makes Koga's gym a bit better. At this point, I was starting to recognize that Squirtle was gonna need to level up because being outsped, especially against Koga, can be really bad. And so I fought all the trainers in his gym. I even went to the fighting dojo and fought them because I wasn't able to beat Koga. And so I've leveled up quite a bit. When I finally do fight Koga, even at my super high level, I'm still not able to one-shot coughing with Dig. And in this battle, it hit me with a smoke screen, then a smog and poison me, so I just reset. So you can see how being attacked by Koga's Pokemon is not something we really want to have happen. In Battle 2, I alternate between Dig and Surf until I get hit by a sludge by the Muck and get poisoned, which is kind of unlucky. At that point, I just use Surf because I can't afford to keep taking the damage from Poison since Dig does take two turns. I do get lucky in this battle though. Weezing uses Self-Destruct while I'm underground. If it would have hit me with Self-Destruct, I would have counted that as a loss because while I do have other Pokemon in my party, they really don't need to be here for these battles. I just don't like going back and forth to the Pokemon Center. And although in competitive and in Pokemon Stadium, the person who uses Self-Destruct loses, in the single player game, you lose when you run out of Pokemon no matter what. So that would have been bad and I may have not survived if it hit me with anything else anyway. Sure, having the poison status effect was unlucky and if I didn't, I probably would have won because it does really add up. But these fights are just so much tougher than either of the two. And why is that? What is the main difference between Squirtle and Bulbasaur and Charmander? Well, there's a simple answer, because Squirtle is even using similar moves. It has Body Slam, it has Dig, it has Surf instead of Flamethrower. Almost the same as Charmander, but what it lacks is a power-up move. It does not get Sword Stance, it does not get Growth. And because of that, we're not able to exploit the Badge Boost glitch. Sure, we do get Withdraw, but that just raises defense. That doesn't help us enough. It's not worth having it. It's actually better to have another attacking move. For those of you who have asked, the way the badge boost glitch works is the game is supposed to give you a 12.5% boost once you get certain badges, so defense once you get the boulder badge. What it actually does is every time your stats get modified, it re-gives you 12.5% on top of what you already have. So if I use growth and I have the boulder badge, I will also get a 12.5% increase in my defense and as you collect more badges by the time you're at the Elite Four, every stat gets increased except for HP. There's no badge associated with that. It wasn't obvious to me at the time just how important it was to have these moves. I mean, even in Generation 2 and beyond where the badge boosts act like they should, you just get 10% at the beginning and it doesn't change. Having a move that powers up your attack or special attack so that you can set up on a weaker Pokemon and sweep through the team helps out tremendously. In Generation 1, it's just a double negative not to have it. And so Squirtle, while I love having Ice Beam and offers great coverage, these battles are just a whole lot harder than I remember them. But Squirtle's stats frankly aren't as good either. It has more invested in its defense than Charmander does. And in these runs, speed and offense are what we're going for. The best way to defend ourselves is not to get hit. The best way not to get hit is one hit KO. We're just not able to do that. And that's why we have situations like with the muck where we get poisoned and it can really impact our chances of success. Speaking of which, I'm still not able, even at my super high level, to get by rival Fievel. So I'm just gonna go to Erica's gym, which I remembered I haven't done. This serves two purposes, gain some experience and gain stat experience. Hopefully that will help because I wasn't taking out the Pidgeot with a single Ice Beam. Anyway, once I've defeated Erica, Rival 5 is still not cooperating with me. 
So I do go to Cinnabar, pick up Blizzard, which is in the Pokemon Mansion, and go battle Blaine and all the trainers because those Pokemon aren't really much of a threat at all with Surf and with my decent enough special considering they pretty much just use fire moves and I have good defense so the normal moves won't do much anyway. So with that said, you think Blaine would be easy, but he actually isn't because the only Pokemon you outspeed is the Growlithe. I get a critical hit with Stomp by the Ponyta. If I got flinched, I would have lost this fight. I also get a critical hit from the Rapidash. And then our canine uses takedown. It takes two surfs to knock it out. And had I not gotten a favorable damage range and a completely idiotic usage of a super potion for no reason, I would have lost to Blaine after defeating every trainer in his gym. And for the record, this is not my first attempt. I did lose. I got a critical hit from one of those takedowns and I lost the fight. Like, I'm just completely flabbergasted how much more frustrating this is. It's not impossible, but I was expecting at least Blaine to be really easy. And even he is requiring me to either grind up even more than I already have or get a little lucky. But after we defeat Blaine, we've really run out of additional options. We can either fight Sabrina, which will be very tough, or fight the rival. And I chose to fight the rival. And you may wonder, why am I using Ice Beam and not Blizzard? Well, even at my current level, Blizzard will not one-hit KO the Venusaur. And having Ice Beam will serve a useful purpose a little later on, so I'd like to keep it for as long as possible. Ice Beam will one-hit KO the Pidgeotto. The Gyarados is a three-hit KO. Ice Beam and Body Slam do roughly the same, although Body Slam has that chance for paralysis, so perhaps it's the better move. Growlithe, easy one-hit KO with Surf. Alakazam is not necessarily a one-hit KO with Body Slam, so I go for Dig. Thankfully, it went for Recover and I didn't get hit. And Venusaur will go for one of its grass moves. It doesn't know which one is best. I got a Vine Whip, which is what I want, and you can see Ice Beam is also a two-hit KO, but is much less likely to miss. So, once again, we're able to get by a fight, but this was my third attempt after getting through almost the entire game. But thankfully, we finally have a run of easy battles. Giovanni is a complete joke. Like always, he actually has not been difficult in any of these runs so far. I know that will change, but so far he's been very easy. Sabrina at my current level isn't too, too bad. But really, that's only because her AI is pretty awful. Kadabra will outspeed you, one body slam will faint it. Mr. Mime, you would need to use Dig. This was my first attempt, so I just used two body slams. Venomoth went for Stun Spore. Thankfully, I was able to get it with a couple surfs. The Alakazam, you just don't want Psy Beam. Ideally, the reason I use body slam is it's gonna be a two hit KO regardless, and body slam has that 30% chance of paralysis, meaning I get to attack again. So that would be great. I get Psy Wave, it does quite a bit of damage, but nonetheless, for the first time in a long time, we have a gym leader that I'm able to beat on my first attempt. And that will continue once we go to Giovanni. So something you may not know is that Giovanni's gym only opens after you defeat the seven other gyms. So I can't just go to him first, even though his gym is a whole lot easier being the ground type gym. Trust me, I would have loved to have done that. Unfortunately, that's not a real option. Giovanni is super easy. I was able to one hit KO everything with Surf, albeit I did get hit with a Growl by the Doug Trio, and that sped me up a little bit and gave me a little bit more special. I'm not sure if that impacted or not, but it was a pretty easy victory regardless. And this is one of the last times I'm actually gonna get to say that, so we should savor it. Anyway, Rival 6 is like Rival 5, except a lot harder since our level has barely changed, and his team has gotten just a little bit better. Okay, maybe a lot better. So much so that at level 55, a lower level than Charmander was at, I wasn't able to even get by the Alakazam. Everything outspeeds, almost nothing is a one hit KO. The Gyarados can be a four hit KO. It's really bad and the Alakazam now has Psychic. So rather than searching around for places to level up, I decided to use my rare candies here. It's not super, super early. It's a little early. I'd like to use them preferably after Victory Row. There's a lot of strong trainers there, but in the interest of time, now is when I used it. And at level 62, the battle isn't too bad. If you get a bit of luck, and this battle was chock full of luck. From getting a Leer, 
paralyzing a critical hit, and then finally having the Venusaur use Vine Whip instead of Razor Leaf, which would be a one-hit KO, it's just not looking very good for me right now. So as I head through Victory Road, I need to level up a bunch and fight the Elite Four quite a few times. Enough that I'm at level 76 when I'm really able to start making a consistent run. So from that, you already can figure out that it's going to be harder than it was for Bulbasaur. But will we be able to beat Charmander? Let's take a look. Laurely. Her AI is such that Dugong won't probably attack you unless it uses takedown, but it's very likely to use rest. Three body slams is enough to take out the Dugong. Now Cloyster has really, really good defense, so you're going to want to use a couple surfs and hope you don't get confused by a supersonic. Now you may notice we've gotten rid of Ice Beam and this is the reason I didn't want Blizzard, because Mimic actually helps make this fight very consistent. We can Mimic Amnesia from the Slowbro to gain plus six in special and sweep through the rest of Laura Lee's team, unless the Slowbro also uses an Amnesia, which happened here, or we get a critical hit, which thankfully doesn't. But with Mimic, we're able to consistently get by Loralee and move on to Bruno, who once again is the easiest fight of the Elite Four, you surf. At this level, everything is a one hit KO except for the Machamp and it used Leer. So I've gone through two Elite Four battles without actually taking any damage. So I think we've progressed from Game Champ 3011 to Game Master 3011. By the way, I will never do a damageless run. That is just not my thing. And speaking of not my thing, Agatha usually isn't because of her very trolly nature. Prior to her fight, we're going to get rid of Mimic and teach Blizzard. This is needed more for Lance, but does have a very important use in this fight as well. However, just prior to that, we have to survive the first Gengar, and it can use Confuse Ray, which would be very bad, Hypnosis, which it does use, but it misses. If it hits, it's very bad. You kind of want Nightshade or a Hypnosis miss. I do get the Hypnosis miss. Dig is a one-hit KO. Blizzard is for Golbat, which can also confuse me, so it's good to get rid of that in one turn. You'll outspeed the Haunter and the Arbok. Both are one-hit KOs with Dig. Now all we need is not to get confused. And hit ourselves in confusion. And get hit with the Nightshade. And because we're going for Dig, that's actually twice the opportunity for us to hit ourselves in confusion. Thankfully, while we do take damage, we're able to get past Agatha in this run. If we want to outspeed the Gengar, or Gengars, we would need to be at a much higher level, but it actually isn't necessary. Unless you get super bad luck, at full HP, you should be able to do it about 70-80% of the time. Lance, however, once again, is really, really difficult. So much so, I actually replace Dig with Reflect. The first time you're going to see me using Reflect. Reflect works a little bit different in Generation 1. It only affects a single Pokemon, which is good for us, and it lasts the whole battle which is also good for us. So pretty much it's way overpowered in this generation. The idea here is Gyarados would be a two hit KO with Blizzard and a three hit KO if you use Body Slam, but Blizzard can miss. I was kind of hoping for a Hyper Beam, which I did get so I could set up Reflect. I did take a little bit more damage than I would like, but with Reflect, it's a lot more safe, especially against Aerodactyl. The other major concern is missing a Blizzard against the Dragonairs or Dragonite. That doesn't happen. Aerodactyl did hit me with a bite, but I don't get flinched and it wasn't a critical hit. A Hyper Beam though without Reflect would have done enough to knock me out. So it's good to have Reflect and without it, I was losing again and again to Lance. But for once, Lance isn't the toughest fight. The past two runs, the final rival fight has been a complete joke. Here it is anything but. So much so I have acquired two rare candies and I'm going to be using both of them right now to try and make this fight just a little bit easier because I was also losing here a lot. So once I've done that, heal up, I'm ready to face him. And once again, Reflect will be super handy. We're gonna use it on turn one. Thankfully, Pidgeot uses Mirror Move, which is perfect. And we're able to retaliate with a Blizzard and knock it out in a single hit. Alakazam is very scary since it outspeeds us. 
and a critical hit Psychic would be close to a one-hit KO. Thankfully, he uses Psybeam twice and doesn't get a critical hit. Unfortunately, though, since we don't have Dig anymore, we'll have to settle for a two-hit KO, and this is a perfect example of how poor speed and not great attack make fights so much more difficult since Alakazam had two opportunities to either critical hit or confuse us, either of which would have pretty much been a run-ender. Rhydon is a one-hit KO with Surf, then the Gyarados comes out and I miss with Blizzard. Even with its 90% accuracy in Generation 1, I know it can still happen, but it uses Hyper Beam, which is the best case scenario, since I'm able to tank it due to Reflect, and it now has to recharge, giving me two opportunities to try and take this thing out. Unfortunately, I neither get a critical hit, nor beneficial damage rolls, nor a freeze. Another Hyper Beam is used, but I'm able to tank that just barely, and retaliate and knock out the Gyarados. But the hardest Pokemon is upcoming, and I don't have a lot of health. Obviously, I'm not referring to the Arcanine, which I do outspeed and am able to one-shot with Surf. Venusaur has Mega Drain, Solar Beam, and Razor Leaf. I need Solar Beam, and it uses Solar Beam. And because it takes two turns and I outspeed, I'm able to win. But if I'm being honest, I didn't feel as great about this victory as the others. I feel like reasonably I should be at a slightly higher level to make that fight even more consistent. To one shot the Venusaur, two shot the Gyarados, both these things would be better and I'd probably need to be around level 85. It's also telling that it took even more in-game time than Charmander in spite of the fact I'm at a lower level. So. As a summary of the three starters, if I had to rank them, I feel like it needs to be Bulbasaur on top by quite a margin, honestly, Charmander, and then Squirtle. Yeah, Squirtle eked out a victory at level 80, but with extra time and the luck involved with a lot of these fights, it's the most inconsistent starter. And I think we can learn a lot from how these runs went. Moves that increase your stats are the best in this. Squirtle only got Withdraw, which was kind of useless. We want things like Growth, Amnesia, even Meditate may be helpful, but not having those and trying to do these runs is going to make them a lot tougher, like with Squirtle. There are just too many opportunities for the opponents to retaliate, and a lot of bad luck happens when the opponents have chances to attack you. So I'm pretty surprised in conclusion. I thought it'd be Squirtle, Charmander Bulbasaur, but that's why we do these, right? There's always new things to be learnt about the game, and hopefully I'll be able to use my knowledge I've gained from these three runs to make the next 50 or so go more smoothly. But that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. We are gaining subs like crazy, which is awesome. Trying to hit 200k by the end of this challenge. It's gonna be tough, but I say we do it. Take care, guys. Bye.